This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Public class council. All right, what do we think it does? Now, students, remember, if you type your answer, you can hit run, but then it is submitted. You can't change it. So let's talk about this. Let's take a look at it. Let's brainstorm together. Okay, so we have council, obviously, but we have three other classes, shape, rectangle, and circle. In the council, we got a new shape is declared, and it's set to this shape. Does rectangle extend shape? Yeah. So rectangle and circle are subclasses of shape. That makes sense to me. And then we have a rectangle and a circle object as well. And then we create an array, which you can think of as a list of our three objects. Okay. So for shape, the shape, shape list. Interesting. And so we haven't seen something like this before. Now, what I believe is going to occur here, right? So we have shape is the data type. And if you go up here, yeah, we definitely have a shape data type. However, in our shape list, we have subclasses used. My rectangle is an object. It's a rectangle object. It's not a shape object. Or is it? Well, because of object hierarchy and inheritance, we can actually use the shape data type to reference subclasses. So my expectation is that this would actually function. And see, calculate area, rectangle, calculate area, circle, calculate area. Now, when it comes to polymorphism, the name of this lesson, let me real quick magic my way over here. Let me look at their lesson resources, which they provide to all students. Polymorphism, the ability of an object to perform an action in different ways. So if we look here, when I call calculate area on the shape, well, first, that's my shape, which is a shape object. Second, that's my rectangle, which is a rectangle object. Third, circle, which is circle object. Shape does have calculate area. Guess what? So does rectangle. Shape is width times width. Rectangle is get the width times the height. Notice shape doesn't have a height. So rectangle is going to return something else. Circle actually has the, to calculate the area of a circle, it actually has the correct formula using uh, pi, well, pi rounded. So what happens here, what polymorphism is going to allow to occur is that when we call it on the first part of our array here, shape, it's going to run this method. And then automatically, when it gets to my rectangle, it doesn't run the shape method. It will automatically run calculate area. And that's polymorphism. It, you can think of it as somewhat kind of overriding the other one. It's not going to look above it into the parent class because there's a calculate area right here. So we can utilize this to run the correct calculate area for all objects because they're inheriting or the hierarchy of the parent class. So some brief notes. So, and again, we should always be using our own words. These are just thoughts. And you want to be careful, too, in making sure that you understand this. Understanding this is being able to explain it. So, really, really, this is going to be an important concept. So, in my words, the program instantiates three different objects, one of the parent class, and two different subclasses. Then the objects are placed in an array and are looped through, like we discussed. The area of each object is calculated using calculate area method inside the corresponding class. Hopefully I'm right. Hopefully we're right. Let's check it out. Quapow. Cool. This is going to be really useful and you'll see why. Onward.